Now there's a lot of nuances and differences between stroke styles and, and how races are swum and where races are swum um, in open water and marathon swimming versus pool swimming, but I thought I'd let people who have a little bit more expertise tell you about it. Hi everyone, this is my brother-in-law Adam Moyne, and you all know me. Um, we are live from Okinawa, Japan, here to talk to you a little bit about open water marathon swimming. What I enjoy about marathon swimming is the competitiveness I ha it creates against myself as a swimmer. So as soon as you start a swim, there's nobody else swimming with you. It's just what you give to the water and what you give to your own marathon swim. So it's more so a competition against your own capabilities and it's just so exciting to see what a body and a mind is capable of doing when working together and when you make it through the swim it's a very elated feeling of like oh my gosh what did I just do like yeah so like not many people have done this and not many people have experienced just the utter exhaustion and the utter joy of reaching rocks on the ground because it means that you've accomplished something that just completely exhausted your system. So, And for me, I'd say that I enjoy the, the variables of how different that there's absolutely no same hour of swimming that anybody's ever had mm -hmm. in the same location. It's the ocean. Things are always different and you have to be, have a different kind of mindset going into that, that like, you really, and you're going to do everything you can to finish this swim, but it's completely in the realm of possibility that you're not going to finish. So it's that mixed in with the personal achievement that comes from it. And it might be a little bit selfish of a pursuit because it's not a team. It's a team effort, but you're, it's everybody supporting you. And I think um, it there's a bit of gratitude that comes from that, from all the help you get because you can't do it alone. And, uh, and the personal achievement that comes out at the end of that. This question is about the value of marathon swimming in the world of swimming in general. And I think that the value of marathon swimming is that there's, in the swimming community in general, there's so many different opportunities for each type of person and each type of just body in general, which is a huge thing for me. Um, so I kind of fell into marathon swimming when I beat my sister for the first time in anything. Mm -hmm. And so it, would, it was a two mile swim and I had beat Erica. It was only by a couple minutes, but I still like, it was something that I was decent at. So I pursued it and it just told me that no matter where I am in my life or on my exercise journey, I can and achieve something that I put my mind to and I think that marathon swimming is very important in the swimming community because it's open to anybody. Anybody can do it. I have know people who have trained, who have never swam before, like in their youth and have done accomplished marathon swims with it, with a year of training. And that's like learning to swim to marathon swimming. And it's completely a mental sport as well as physical, obviously but mostly mental and it's, I think it's very valuable. That's a value, it's a valuable lesson in the world of swimming. And I'd say that um, I think my, what I see as value of marathon swimming to swimming in, in general. And I think I could take that even bigger and say athletics in general is that it's, it makes huge headlines of human achievement. And it's also uh, a female dominated sport and more so than any other sport in the world. So as much as we like to compare genders, it's in athletics, it is, a, it, it very much is a woman's sport. And I think that that makes it interesting and cool. And, uh, yeah. This question is about the coolest swims that we have done. I would say that the coolest swim that I have accomplished is the English Channel. There's 
nothing like swimming the English Channel in this world. It is gnarly. You, I was swimming for 13 hours, almost 14 hours, so 13.41 was my official time. You swim through so many different types of weather, um, types of jellyfish, and you swim all through the day into the night, and it's just, it's, there's never been a more stress on my body, for one, and there's never been a more stress on my body mental attitude towards what I can achieve. Um, 12 people started off on the day that I swam the English Channel and only, I believe, three or four finished. And I was one of the first swimmers to finish. Um, I got an award for that swim for the most arduous conditions that summer. So it really kind of attested to my abilities of what I can accomplish. So. That was the coolest swim that I've done, um, but the second one that I, the coolest training experience was in Scotland, and it was 51 degree water. You're in it for like 20 minutes, and you can't speak right because your mouth goes numb, and you can't touch your thumb to, to pinky because your fingers are so cold, they seize up, so you can only like touch your hand that much after like 20 minutes of swimming in this cold water. So that was pretty cool to kind of experience your body going through those changes, but keep pushing anyways. I'd say, um, I mean, I don't have quite the swims that Monica does, but that Catalina Channel under my belt and a lot of training swims that came before that. Uh, and I didn't have favorable conditions for Catalina Channel and we were, uh, a lot of my friends were involved and stuff and they're watermen, but it was definitely a big shock to them to suddenly be on a boat in the dark at night in rough seas and trying to kayak for me. So it was... Yeah. Did one of your kayakers tip over? Oh, well, they all tipped <laughs> over and threw up and all kinds oh of stuff. So, yeah. Marathon swimming is very unique because it's obviously... You're swimming for a very long time in adverse conditions, depending on your weather. So it's more of a mental game than anything. You just have to push past any of the pain. You get thrown a feeding bottle or handed a feeding bottle of basically a purely liquid diet for protein and for whatever you need as a swimmer. So that's it's a training your body as well on what you're eating. And there's no, like, not every swimmer gets uh, solid foods because it's harder to chew when you're really cold. So it's it's a very unique experience that you definitely have a lot of training to go into. Mm -hmm. I'd say for me, it's it's kind of like a Zen phase, especially swimming in the dark. Uh, and then you kind of, your mind goes to a whole nother place. And then uh, you get some really interesting experiences too, like rolling over on your back for feet in the dark and suddenly the sky's clear above you. And it, like you have this, weightless feeling like you're in space uh very hard to describe and not everyone feels it uh but you definitely feel like you're part of an ecosystem in a way and it's really enjoyable and i think it's um it's by far one of the most defining even the training uh very defining part of my life that's probably guided a lot of other things since then with career and everything that wasn't too painful and long. I miss everybody there and I'm hoping the best for your families and for your loved ones and for you. Um, I hope that we all stay safe and that we can all get back in the pool very soon.